All right, so Shelly Odell Brock, um, thank you for being with us today and sharing your knowledge on acupuncture. I'm just gonna ask you to go ahead and begin to um, overspill and tell the people about the healing modality of acupuncture um, because you had it going on Saturday when we were talking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I had a lot going on Saturday. <laughs> Good stuff, so, yeah. Um, so the big question I always get from people about acupuncture is, does it hurt? <laughs> so I'll just start out with, not really, but um, the the whole thought I think for most people of acupuncture of um, having a, like little needles or pins, some people call them put into the body just kind of is um, kind of a ick factor. And so I think that um, a lot of people probably shy away from acupuncture just because they are, are afraid that it might hurt or they you know don't totally understand what it does or how it can help. And um, it, from what I've seen in just my experience in all these years as an acupuncturist is that it, um, it's very beneficial in treating so many conditions that Western medicine can treat, but without the side effects. So that's the nice thing about acupuncture is that, it, you know, the, the treatment, you will always get some benefit from the treatment. It might not be exactly what, you know, it might, it's not like a magic bullet. It doesn't fix everything. The first time, but, um, you will always get some benefit from it. And, um, without any like side effects that are detrimental to your health or well being. So with that said, um, I'll just give you a little bit of background of how I got involved in acupuncture. I would, I think really how this got stuck in my brain is when I was a kid in grade school and growing up in Nebraska in a farming community, where everybody was white faced <laughs> and from uh, Eastern European descent, there came to town a Chinese man who obviously looked different than the rest of us. And um, he was doing acupuncture and my grandmother had problems with her hands. And one of her friends suggested that she go see him. And she did. And she had two treatments before they, um, the um, powers that be decided that he didn't belong in the community and kind of like scooted him down the road. Um, but those two treatments uh, really helped her hands. And till the day she died, she died when she was 94, she didn't have a problem with her hands. And this was probably when she was in her fifties that she was getting treated. So um, what, what he did really did help her and, and lasted a long time. So I'm sure that kind of got cemented in my brain when I was a kid, because I'm thinking like, grandma, you let people put needles in you. And uh, so then, uh, of course, when I got older and ready to go off to college, there were no acupuncture schools in Nebraska. So I couldn't go to acupuncture school. And I kind of really probably had forgotten about it by then. So I ended up becoming a dental hygienist of all things. So I spent um, 36 years as a dental hygienist. And um, part of that time, I went to school for acupuncture and uh, started my acupuncture practice and was just able uh, finally this last um, in March to retire from dental hygiene, thank goodness, and just do acupuncture full time. I found out about the school here in Arizona when uh, my husband and I were hit by a drunk driver and um, someone had suggested that we get acupuncture for his back because he had injured his back in that accident. And I thought, oh yeah, that worked for my grandma. We'll try it. And so we went and um, I was watching the lady do it. And I thought I could do this. And so I found out that there was a school here and I went to check the school out. Um, I got the information and I looked at how much it cost and I was like, yeah, I don't think I'm going to do that. So I, I kind of set it on my, the table beside my couch and it sat there for a year and has, uh, as the universe does with me, um, because I didn't listen the first time I got knocked in the head a second time. So I was at uh, my dental job, my dental hygiene job. And I was, uh, I had a new patient in the chair and I asked, um, how, you know, what, what she do for a living and all that kind of stuff. And she's like, oh, I work at the acupuncture school. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. What do you do with the acupuncture school? And she said, I am in charge of new student admissions. 
And I said, oh, wow, I checked out that school and I just thought it was too expensive. And she said, you should check it out again. And so I did because I kind of felt like I was getting hit in the head again. So that's how I actually ended up going to acupuncture school. And I've been practicing acupuncture uh, as a licensed acupuncturist since June of 2014 when I got my license. And um, I have now a practice in Scottsdale that I um, acquired. I purchased an established practice um, because it just seemed like that was the fastest way to get out of dental hygiene was to buy something that was already established because it was taking a long time to build a practice. And in that practice, I treat a lot of pain and I treat a lot of, I do a lot of cosmetic work, which I really enjoy. So um, that's kind of my background. And um, so just how a little bit about how acupuncture works. Again, like I said, it's not a magic bullet. It's not that I'm, a lot of times people have the mistaken impression that when we do the needling, that we're needling into the nerves, which is really not true. Um, but it's just kind of, I think something that, you know, sometimes things get started and people just think that's what's going on. But there, um, when we needle the body, there are 365 known acupuncture points and they are fall in line on what we call channels or meridians that run through the body. There are 12 major channels and they are all associated with our organs. So like there's the heart channel, the lung channel, the um, small intestine channel, large intestine channel, kidney channel, that kind of thing. So they correspond with the major organs. And there are also some extra channels that run along the body as well that treat some very specific or special conditions. And the, the acupuncture points themselves, um, you can't, it's, it's there an inner, because it's an energy medicine, what you're really feeling for or looking for when you're treating at, with acupuncture are imbalances in that energy in those channels. So I, you could come to me and I would do um, look at you and I would feel your pulses and look at your tongue because that's a lot of what we do for diagnosing in Chinese medicine. And I might say to you, oh, we have a deficiency in your kidney channel. And that doesn't necessarily mean there's anything wrong with your kidney physically. It just means that in the energetics of the channel that is associated with the kidney, there is um, an imbalance. There's not a, there's not not enough of something, either not enough of the chi or not enough of the um, yin energy or the yang energy. So that so when we diagnose like that, it's um, I always try to make clear to people so they don't panic that. It's not that there is a physical ailment with your kidney or your heart or your lung. It's that there is an imbalance in the energy in that channel. There also, when we do the diagnosing in Chinese medicine, we are looking for how are like um, what we call um, like if you have excess conditions in the body, it might be like, do you feel hot? Do you have a lot of trouble with heat? Do you, you know, does heat bother you? Or do you feel cold? Do you have a lot of tr tr trouble with cold things, you know? Or um, do you feel more like, um, like bloated? Or do you feel more like dry? You know, so there's also like, do you feel like really full? Or do you feel like really empty? You know, like your stomach might feel really empty or you might feel again, like real bloated. So those are the kinds of things we look at because that tells us, like what's going on with those, um, those channels in the body. And then there are certain protocols we can use to treat those excesses and deficiencies or heat or cold, wet or dry. We can use the certain protocols depending on which channel it is and um, where the um, problems are occurring. Like, are you, you know, are you noticing more of this in the upper body and the lower body? So we, we, we have a certain pattern that we use to place the acupuncture points, depending on what the condition is that you have that is being treated. And there's also, um, we take into consideration just the, how you look physically, like, do you look tired? Do you look worn out? Or do you look like you have energy? Or do you look like you um, need sleep? Or um, do you come in looking like you're all stressed out, which a lot of people are nowadays? So we kind of take that into consideration too, but that's kind of just a general synopsis of how we do 
um, treatments, how we diagnose. It's a little bit different than Western medicine, but we can effectively treat things like headaches and we can boost the immune system. We can decrease blood pressure. We can balance emotions. Um, pain, pain is um, generally when someone comes in with pain, it's um, when the flow of the chi energy in the meridian or the blood energy in, in that area, say maybe somebody has a pain in their elbow, what is happening is somehow the channel that runs down through the elbow area has gotten some kind of a blockage in that um, channel, say, say an injury. It got injured and then there was inflammation and then now there's swelling. So the, the chi and the blood don't, energies don't flow through there um, as freely. So what we can do with acupuncture then by where we place the needles and um, we can also use some additional um, tools such as I have an LED light that I can put over the needles once I put them in. And it just helps increase the blood flow and circulation while the needles are doing their work. But once we clear that, the, the energy from being stopped in that area, then it will flow more freely. And then the patient won't be experiencing the pain that they were having. So basically in Chinese medicine, um, when someone has pain, it's because there's a blockage somewhere along that meridian or the channel that's flowing through that area. So just clearing that blockage will help the free flow of the chi in the blood and the pain goes away. So um, that's, it. that's how we treat pain. Um, again, like the other conditions, like we were talking like headaches and blood pressure and um, uh, female issues um, are all treated by you're just rebalancing the energy in the body in the, the certain channels that are affecting those areas. So it's all about balance, the yin and the yang, making everything, the energy in the body balanced so that it flows freely. And then you, you know, everything can work in harmony. So that's kind of just a little nutshell of what acupuncture can do and how it works. Um, does anybody have any questions or anything that they would like to know further? Um, I have lots of information. I just didn't want to bore everybody to death. I think that you're given a wealth of information. I would ask you just to, if you could just um, hit on some of the governing factors be, behind acupuncture that we spoke of. Oh, very good. I'm glad you reminded me of that. I forgot to write that one down. So um, being a licensed acupuncturist is the only way really that you can practice acupuncture, except for there are... Um, there are doctors and, um, you know, Western doctors in like chiropractors um, and a physical therapist can do acupuncture as well. But for the most part, it's, um, you have to be a licensed, you know, go through a licensing procedure and, and um, all that good stuff. And then um, as I had talked with Kim before, um, there, I don't typically, well, no, it's not typically, I don't ever take insurance. I'm not set up to take insurance. And one of the main reasons for that is once you get hooked up into the insurance system, then they dictate to you how you can treat your patients. So you, um, you're told that you can only do X number of treatments and you can only do these kinds of points. You can't use this, you know, if you're using any auxiliary um, like the LED light, or sometimes we do the cupping to release that, um, the energy flow in, in areas. So they, they have a pretty, um, good control on what you can and you can't do. And, um, the other side of that coin as well is that they typically don't pay what you're worth. You know, they, you have to contract with them for their rate, which is, always a lot lower than what your, you know, the normal fee is. And um, again, you know, they, they can control what you can and can't do. And I would have to pay someone to file those insurance claims because I don't have the time to deal with all that. So not only would I be getting, you know, lower pay, but I'm also getting, um, having to pay someone else to do something that I just don't have the time to do. But um, it just is kind of, uh, once you get into that world, it, it, kind of is, uh, you're kind of stuck there and, 
into you can figure out a way to get out, but it's it's kind of controlling. Yeah, Shelley, could you tell us a little bit about cupping? Sure. So a cupping is um, you probably remember seeing um, the swimmers in the Olympics a few Olympics back, like um, Michael Phelps. He had those like round hickey looking marks on his back. And that is from cupping. And what cupping does is um, when the muscles get a buildup of toxins in them, or, you know, a lot of times you hear about lactic acid, like if you exercise a lot, you can get lactic acid built up in the muscles and it can make them hurt. So what the cupping does is it, um, it's more or less like um, suction. And so you, it sucked onto the body. Usually people are getting it done on their back because that's where a lot of people carry tension and it's um, sucked on to the back. And then um, the toxins and the, the just, I call it gunk, which is not really a, a scientific term, but just the stuff that builds up in the muscles is brought to the surface of the um, muscle. So that then the lymph system in the body can carry it away. So that's why it's really important. Like when you have a massage, or you have acupuncture or you have cupping, that you drink a lot of water. So it assists the lymph system in moving whatever has been brought to the surface and the body needs to get rid of. So the cupping it just, again, is just a way to uh, relax the muscle and release any blockage that might be impeding the flow of the energy in the, in the muscle, the flow of the energy in the blood so that it can, you know, that causes the pain then if you can't get that through there. So once you release it, then it helps to make that a lot, um, a lot better for the patient. And then I usually like to cup first and then do the needles because once the muscles relax and they take the needles even better. And we do do cupping on the face too, but it's a little different than what we do on the body, obviously, because nobody wants to go around with big like hickey marks on their face. So um, we, they're like little glass cups and it's kind of like, I like to call it like little fish kisses. But again, what it's doing is it's, it's increasing blood circulation and blood flow to the face, collagen production. So that helps make the, the complexion looks, look brighter. Um, fine lines and wrinkles will be minimized because everything's plumper and it just gives you a, a nice look and it also relieves tension in the face. I never realized until I started doing the cosmetic work how much um, tension that people carry in their face. And I spent 36 years looking at faces and never realized that there's a lot of tension people carry all along here and even along here. And when you do the cupping then, and the gua sha, which is when you use the jade tool to, to gently scrape the skin, it um, just helps release that tension and helps release any puffiness and extra fluid in the face. And um, it's just so nice to see people Patients, when I do that on them, that you can literally see them kind of relax into the pillow because they're, they're just, it's such a release for them. And once, you know, you get that tightness out of the face, then too, your face is going to look better because it's not all tight. So, but it's, it's um, really a nice experience to have that done. Well, thank you, Shelly, for explaining that. I was always curious about it. Thank you, Karen. That was a good question. Yeah, thanks for explaining. I, I, I've never been educated on acupuncture, so I don't really know necessarily what to ask, but this does help me understand it a lot better um, and not be so afraid to look into it. Yeah, the, the thing too, that if you, if you want to think of about how it works, um, this is what I usually tell my patients too, is that once you place that needle in a spot, it causes like a micro trauma to the body, which then jump starts the body's healing resources. So that's why I like acupuncture and a lot of the, the natural healing modalities is because it's just getting the body to do what the body was designed to do, and that is heal itself. And so by using some of these natural modalities like cupping, like acupuncture, like um, Twina massage, which is a Chinese kind of massage, um, or just even regular, you know, Swedish massage or whatever you like, when you use those modalities, it's just, it's jump starting the body's ability to heal itself or even crystal healing or um, hypnotherapy like Karen does. All of that, it just, it's helping the body to heal itself, which I think is really the direction that we need to go because there, as we've seen with a lot of our friends and family members, 
the, the drugs that they put people on have a side effect and then they give them another drug for that side effect and then another drug for those two side effects. And it's just kind of a vicious circle. So when you can um, train the body or teach the body to, to heal itself like it's supposed to, because it's, a lot of our bodies have forgotten that because of the stuff we've done to them, then, um, then it's a lot, it's a, just a lot healthier way to go. So that's really the key to all of it is just restoring that balance in, uh, in the body and letting the body do what it naturally is supposed to do. I have a question. I um, I live in another state. So how do you go about finding um, someone who does acupuncture? Like what type of questions do you ask? How do you know if they're a good fit? So there is, um, every state has an acupuncture board and it, it, it'll be listed under your governmental in your state will be listed under the government agency. So you can either like Google, like acupuncture state board in my, you know, in your state, whatever state that is, and it should bring that up. And then that board has a listing of all the licensed acupuncturists in the state. And then you should be able to find like for your area as well. And what that tells you is that those acupuncturists, acupuncturists have passed their testing like they need to. They have kept their licenses up by doing their continuing education credits. And so they have to, you know, like here in Arizona, I have to do 15 credit hours every year just to renew my license. So each state kind of varies a little bit. But what that will tell you is that they're in good standing, their licenses, you know, they've kept it current. And you can also check and see if there's been any disciplinary action against that, you know, any of those acupuncturists. And that will tell you as well, like, you know, probably not, you know, not people aren't always guilty, but you might want to stay more towards the ones that have, haven't had any disciplinary action. And then once you locate someone on that list that you think you might, you know, you want to check out again, just ask them questions like, you know, maybe like, where did you go to school? How long have you been practicing? Um, where, you know, do you, are you keeping up with your continuing education? Because that is a real big one as far as keeping licenses current. And you can also ask them, you know, what their sterilization procedures are. Needle, acupuncture needles are single use and they should be disposed of right after they are pulled from the patient. So they should go in a sharps container. So you can also ask them like, you know, what kind of sterilization do they do? Make sure that they're not reusing needles, which I don't know anybody that does, but you know, that's just a good thing to double check. And um, just, you know, you can check with them and see if they belong to any of the um, professional organizations uh, for acupuncture as well. So those kinds of things tell you that it's an acupuncturist that takes their education seriously and that they keep up with their credentialing. And, and typically, you know, those, the people that do that are more, you know, they're on top of the latest, you know, things that are coming out and the latest techniques and, and stuff like that. So, um, but that's generally the best way I tell people to find one. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I've also heard of some, um, I've seen some physical therapists use needles or whatnot. So are they governed like the same way you guys are? Unfortunately not. And that's been a big um, fight for quite a while now between the physical therapists and the acupuncturists. Um, <clears throat> of course, we feel like, you know, they ought to stay in their own lane and do their own thing because I don't do physical therapy. They shouldn't do acupuncture, but somehow they decided that they thought they should do that. So many times um, they go to like a weekend class, the same thing with chiropractors that do acupuncture or um, even physicians that do acupuncture. A lot of times they've attended, you know, weekend classes to, to learn to do this stuff where a licensed acupuncturist, like I went to four and a half years of school. So, and I'm also right now in the doctorate program. So I'm going to be going, you know, taking another um, nine classes just to get my doctorate. But you know, I, I went through a lot of rigorous training. I went through a lot of classes on um, Chinese medical theory and treating patients and, you know, finding points and, you know, treating patients in clinics. So there's a lot more education that is done for acupuncturists than like physical therapists or chiropractors or doctors that decide that they want to dabble in it and um, go to like some weekend classes and all of a sudden they're needling. Thank you. Mm 
Anyone else? Lee says, I like alternative medicine and Eastern philosophy as well. So yeah, most of um, the people, um, I'm bringing them on because of that uh, background and because I'm meeting them and they have their own story on how to run business or why they do what they do. I think it's important while many of us are actually in that change and shift from a government structure into a, um, I don't know if I would call it a freedom structure, but it would be a, a more sturdy structure to trust um, the tribes and the networks that you're in rather than trusting the powers that would be with uh, what you do, governing your life, your um, communities, your finances. Um, I do believe that there is a balance as um, Shelly said, but I also believe that for those that have faith, um, holistic medicines work a lot better. Um, it's something that you have to fill out for yourself. The reason why I went to um, her, I looked her up on Google and um, it was because I had had experience with um, acupuncture about 25 years ago and um, I was going through some stressful times. And um, it just, it flashed in my mind. So I know that it was God leading me because I don't like to take medicine either. And they had put me on inhalers in August for asthma. And I have not had an asthma attack since I was uh, probably about seven years old. And so I said, no, we're not going back there because this year I had taken prednisol for sinuses and all of that. And, you know, gratefully that thought came back and I was able to meet Shelly. I do believe that um, after she said it, that's why I look so beautiful for my son's wedding because of the acupuncture. <laughs> 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 because, you know, I'm not getting cosmetic, but um, I could see that there was more uh, life coming back into me um, as I've done it because those pins, when, they, when she put them in the first um, time, uh, the pressure started relieving from my body. Um, tears just automatically began to come from my eyes, not because I was in pain, but because it's built up pressure that's blocking your body from operating, like she said, the proper way, those um, meridians. And many of you um, are studying some type of holistic um, modality for something. If it's just to understand spirit more but these um areas and these people coming on give you the opportunity of understanding some of the things that you're studying from um concepts of a gong master or even from you know shelly as an acupuncturist and then as uh you know some of you are young you're able to adapt or adjust what you do in your work to um, something that fits. It's not to say that you're going to, it's the ideas behind what you can do beyond what you have done. I hope that makes sense. And that's the thing about all like healing, the natural healing modalities, they all deal with energy. And, you know, we forget that like um, everything is vibration in this world even like the table or the chair you're sitting in, it's not solid. It's, it's at a microscopic level, it's all molecules vibrating. And that's the same thing that our bodies are. Are there just molecules vibrating? And once we, once we realize that, you know, if we can keep that vibration balanced, then we can stay healthy. Then, you know, that makes life a lot easier and a lot, a lot more pleasant, but yeah, it's, it's, it's all energy and all healing modalities. That's what they do. They work at re restoring that balance um, to the energy in the body. Powerful. All right. So do you guys, anyone have any other questions? If not, we're going to shut down and say thank you to Shelly at Scottsdale Integrative um, Acupuncture. Thank you. This was great information. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. And um, Kim, you can um, you can send out my um, uh, information um, to the ladies if they do have questions. I think of later they can email me um, at uh, 
they can do uh, Shelly at Scottsdale Integrative Acupuncture.com. Okay, I'll take a picture and send over to the card. Um, I think I have it at home, but yeah, yeah I'll do yeah. that. So if, you know, That's if you great. think of something later that you would like um, an answer to or help with, just um, send me an email. I'll be glad to help you. Okay. All right. All right. So thank you, Shelly, again. I'll see you Saturday. And um, thank you guys for coming on in and uh, for the questions as well and the interest in these. Um, it's not new, but they are coming back, these modalities from um, antiquity that are coming back so that we can throw away that pharmacology. All right. So you guys be blessed. Thank you, Shelly. Um, and you. I will see you guys again next week and some on Thursday. Blessings. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right.